Here's number six. The numbers are bigger, which is a bit more intimidating, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I want to get my pair of numbers that add to something, they multiply to something. What are they going to add to in this particular question? No, no, yeah. Negative yep, negative 19. There we go. There's that number in the middle. And the pair of numbers want to multiply to 60. Right? <coughs> 6 times 10. Okay. Now, when you have a look at this, 60 is a big number. It's got lots of factors. But you can round it down when you see this minus 19. Right? It looks to me like this is going to be two negative numbers because they've got to multiply be positive, but somehow they're going to add to be negative. So what two negatives did you think of? Yeah. Negative 15 and negative 4. Very good. Negative 15, negative 4. Now I'll just pause for a second and just make a side comment which I'll address again in a few minutes. If you were like, man, where are these numbers coming from? Okay, They're just like coming out of thin air. Um, you're right that this is not easy. Right? Which is why mathematicians looked at this problem and thought there's got to be another way to do this. Okay? So we will get to another way in a minute. For now, let's see what we can do with these numbers now that we know what they are. The reason I've got these is because I'm going to break apart this minus 19x into a minus 15 and a minus 4. Okay? So I'm going to tease it apart like that. My question will be, alright, which one should I put first? Which one do I want to pair with this guy? And which one do I want to pair with this guy? Okay? What do you guys reckon? Do you think, for example, the 15, the minus 15x, but rather, bless you, do you think it should go with the 10x squared or with the 6? I reckon probably with the 10x squared, right? Uh, an easy, it doesn't always work, but an easy way to notice is that if you've got a big number and a small number, usually the big number will go with the big one, and the small one will go with the small one, usually, okay? So let's write this out. I'm going to break apart that minus 19x now, right? There's my minus 4x plus 6, and now is the moment of truth. I'm going to look at those two pairs, 1, 2, and when I take out whatever factor I can from there, I want the same thing happening for both of them, like this x plus 4 that we got before, right? If I get the same thing, then I know I'm on the right track. What can I take out of the first pair? I can take out 5x, right? 10 and 15, they'll give me 5. And you'll, you'll notice this happening over and over again, right? Because of the way we've paired them, you'll always be able to get 1x out of the first pair. So I take my 5x out, which leaves me with 2x, take away 3. Okay, now this is promising because when you look at this, it looks like it's going to work out. What should I take out of the second pair? Okay, now watch out. This is an interesting one. You should take out negative 2. The reason why you want to take out a negative is because, see how there's this minus 3 here? You want there to be a minus 3 at the end, but that's positive there. So I'm going to have to take out a negative. That, sure enough, gives me 2x minus 3, okay? And you can just double check mentally. If you went backwards, minus 2x, sorry, minus 2 times 2x, that'll give you that. Minus 2 times minus 3, the double negative cancels and gives you the plus 6. Thumbs up, okay? So that equals 0. Now I've got my two pairs and I can finish off my factorization. Okay, what do I do from here now that I actually am factored? <coughs> I want to find the number that's going to make that zero, and I want to find the number that makes that zero. If you like, you can go through this whole process and write the equations out, but you'll start to get familiar enough with these that off the first one, for instance, I can say, see how I'm going to multiply by five? Right. Five times that number. I want this to be something over five, so the fives cancel. What over five? It's going to be the other number, so that they'll collapse together and be zero. So two over five is one of my solutions. And the other one here, I'll divide by 2, then have a 3 left over, it'll be 3 over 2. Okay? Last one, let's have a crack at it. 8x squared minus 2x minus 3. Let's see if we can do this one in our heads without writing down the extra step. I'm searching for a pair of numbers. I want them to add to minus 2. And what do I want them to multiply by? Negative, multiply two. Negative what's crazy? 24. Right? Minus 3 times 8. That was convenient. All right, so. I want numbers that are off by 2, and they multiply to 24, minus 24, okay? Which factors am I going to look for? Negative 6, minus four, four. Negative six and plus 4. That's going to do it for me, isn't it? So this minus 2x, I'm going to break, break apart into a minus 6x and a plus 4x, right? Which one should be which? Which one should go first? The 4x... Now this is an interesting one. Remember how I said usually big numbers go with big numbers? They don't always every single time. 
If I write out ax squared plus 4x, you can see these guys have a lot in common, right? And then I'm going to write my minus 6x minus 3 along the end. Okay, now I can pair up. Uh, let's see here, 4x. Is that all right? What do I take out of the second pair? Negative 3. Minus 3. And there's my same factor on both of them. And now I'm pretty much there. Okay, again, I'm going to read my numbers off. I want to multiply by 4, so my number will be divided by 4, and I want to be left with a 3. <coughs> and with this one, I'm going to multiply by 2, so I want it to be divided by 2. And why is it negative? Why is it negative this time? Yeah, because I have a plus here, right? So I actually want this number to be minus 1, so when it hits the plus 1, it vanishes away. 